It's really bad. It's really bad. It's really bad. Oh boy. <laughs> I feel sick just looking at it. Seven Sigma of Grade. Guess where we are? Home Depot. I'm not really excited. I'm excited because my husband is excited. I'm not excited. It's hot. He's such a grumpy guy. Why are you so grumpy? I'm just trying to figure out what we coming here for. Look, you turn around and be on camera. Stop acting like you don't want to be on camera. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I talked my husband into looking at pavers. So that's what we're going to look at first. We have these ones and these ones and these ones and these ones and those ones. So these are cool. I like these and they look easier because it is large. Or these. Or these, but those are a little smaller. But smaller. Yeah, but this look like a lot of work for somebody who don't know what they're doing. They're really not that hard. Are you sure? Well, easy peasy. Okay. I actually like these though. Got the old school European Italian stuff. Couple phones. Oh, like the cobblestones. I like that. Yeah, these. Victorian looking. Uh, Rome looking stuff. Like those that. are cool. Oh, that'll be cute for like, um, yeah, walkways and stuff. Ooh, these have designs. So this is our new thing. My husband likes to hide from me when we are in the store. So that's what I'm doing again. Going down each aisle like a crazy mad woman looking for my husband. Guess what I found? I found him! Woo! And what is this for? Cutting the sewer drain and putting an adapter on. Got it. So we've been trying to figure out should we get a hacksaw or a sawsaw? Well, actually, not we, but he's been trying to figure a that sawzall out. Sawzall or a hacksaw? A sawsaw. What it's called a sawzall. It's sawzall. Oh. Sawzall. <laughs> sawzall. Is it for real? Mm -hmm. Sawzall. Oh, saw, 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 sawzall. Sawzall. Oh. So the sawzall is better? Electric. So, based off of people who have done the things that we're trying to do, we're going to get a. Sawzall. <laughs> Say it again. Oh, no. Sawzall. We're gonna get a sawzall, but a hacksaw is hand, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's manual. It's cheaper. But it's manual. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're gonna get a sawzall. <laughs> sawzall. <laughs> is this the sawzall? Oh, it is. Sawzall. So we went with the Milwaukee brand of the Sawzall. Sawzall Hexa. That's what we got. Uh, you gonna leave here? Oh. <laughs> He's about to leave your turn. Huh? And you're about to leave the receipt. And we are out. We're done. Bye bye. Bye bye, Home Depot. So the road closures were removed and the evacuation orders were lifted in our zone. So we were allowed back onto our property. Lots of bulldozers were brought in to create dozer lines, which helped keep the fire from reaching our mountain range. The fire reached to the left side of the mountain range in front of us and took out both sides of Breckenridge on the far left. It's kind of hard to see the burn marks from this angle, but we'll do a drive by of that area in a future video. Fire was a wake-up call, and it taught us the importance of fire abatement. Being in a high fire hazard zone is no joke, and it's something that I now take very seriously. But it is a relief to know that our property was spared, and it's good to get back up here and appreciate how fortunate we really are. Condolences out to those who lost their lives, homes, and property. Our thoughts and prayers go out to them. The fires are actually still burning. They're still burning on the opposite side of the mountains, but we did make it up here. And I don't know if you can see in the background, the fires are right there on the opposite side of those mountains, but they do have it somewhat contained. So we were able to come up here to get a little bit of work done. So the boys, I have two boys today, they're gonna get some work done today. So let's see what they're doing. 
Bye. Ay, ay, ay. Get to the chopper. Ay, ay, ay. <gasps> oh, did it work? Ay, ay. Oh, did it work? No, maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it worked. Oh, baby. <laughs> This is bootleg. Yeah, that is bootleg. So my husband has fixed the screen door. We talked to the manufacturing company and it is fixed now. Sort of kind of fixed. It doesn't slide as smooth, but it is fixed. Ooh, it's huge. Look at that big old spider. Oh my God. It is huge. Okay, hold on. It might jump, so okay. hold on. I'm gonna back up. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. I hate to do it to you, dog. <laughs> It's a what? Milwaukee fuel hacksaw. <laughs> Why are you saying it like that? Are you gonna sound country? Because I'm country. I don't know how to put this Diablo blade inside of it. Read the instructions. I can't read. <laughs> I assume it goes like that. But it don't feel right. It don't look right. Well, I'm trying to read the instructions. <laughs> So the sewer drain came threaded on the outside and I had a hard time finding a threaded bayonet style adapter to attach a sewer hose. I do not want to hard pipe the drain until we drill the well and have a septic tank installed. So for right now, I want to be able to attach a Camco sewer hose and drain our gray water into a rhino dump so tank. Cut the street. Hold on. What? <laughs> How'd you run water through this if this doesn't work? No, this is the drain. I ran water to the house. I got a water pump in it. We hooked the water pump up to the tank. What is this? Do? The, this is the drain coming out. Ah. So the shower, the kitchen sink, the bathroom sink, the toilet, everything comes out of there. And the, well, they didn't make a what to who now? <laughs> Let me show you. <laughs> So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off the threaded end of the sewer pipe and place a non-threaded bayonet adapter and cap. So my son came up with the idea of not cutting the pipe and instead cement the adapter directly onto the threaded tip. We trying some Now being the rookie adventurers that we are, why not? If it doesn't work, we can always go back to the original plan. So in order to give the cement more service to bond, I put some plumber's tape over the threads. <laughs> Fingers crossed that this goofy idea actually works. Well, they still doing um, dropping water. Water or retardant? Uh, it's a helicopter. I don't know what they have, but it looks like it looks like that red stuff, retardant. And then there's another helicopter down there. That <laughs> stick. They still fighting fires. Two helicopters are going with a uh, fire retardant and they are fighting the fires down there, which is on the opposite side of that mountain over there. So it's the opposite side. I don't know if you can still see the smoke, but the smoke is still, um, there's still pretty much a lot of smoke. Yes. Huh. Your hands are getting stuck together. We're in business. Is that fire retarded? Because it's the rare ball. Where's the water? To date, the fire has burned over 59,000 acres, destroyed over 200 structures, and is currently 75% contained. Doing a what? Red Odeo unboxing. 
they wanted us to try this okay. battery out and we're gonna see what it do we're definitely not interested in having a bunch of sponsors but we were asked to try this red audio 12 volt 100 amp hour bluetooth battery and ac charger we plan to start installation of our solar power system in a few weeks and i didn't want to keep pulling power from our blue eddy to run the 12 volt water pump so again being the rookie adventurers that we are we figured why not let's see if it works and this is the ac charger for the battery so I grabbed the battery box to be able to have multiple port connections to the battery, specifically so I can use the cigarette adapter to wire up the water pump. It turns on by Bluetooth, and then you can check and see if the battery's charged or not, and how much power and current and voltage and capacity and all that good stuff. Wow. And it gives you scoop on the battery info. Serial number, the temperature of the battery, all that good stuff. Younger, older, stronger. Ridodo. Y'all gonna have good memory photo footage of y'all. something where you leave it all connected except for the holes but it needs to be enclosed just some type of shed or a house where this and this is all i know i can do it can't you just get like a bin what I decided to do is create a water pump box out of a pelican case with the connection for the hoses and the electrical plumb through the case. That way I can attach hoses and turn on the power in less than one minute. Also when it's time to leave, I can disconnect the hoses, close the case and store the pump in the house. Doing it that way can save me the time and the headache of building a shed just for a temporary water pump. Did you almost fall? Hey, come back here. Man, I'll worry about building a utility shed for the well pump when we drill the well. But for right now, I want to keep this simple and portable. Don't turn the water on. Do not turn the water on. Turn the water on. No, you better not. Stop it. <laughs> Let's see if the Redodo battery Redo to red audio. And it works. Let's see if a shorter hose works. I doubt it. Yes, no. Nothing's happening yet. If you had a short hose that didn't expand. <laughs> <laughs> it might work. Uh, like a straight hard pipe. Yeah. You see what? It also leaks out a little bit. The bottom. So that's going to create another trench. Don't want to hard pipe it. I'm going to wait for the whale. So we got the water pump hooked up to the red Odeo battery. We have the battery inside this battery box so I can use the 12 volt mm -hmm. cigarette lighter input. And it is powering the pump just fine. We have the valve open so that's why the pump is running. Can you turn the water off again? Say hi to the people. Hi to the people. <laughs> So the battery Bluetooth is still working while being inside this battery box. 98%, 13.3 volts. So not bad. You chilling on the, on the yoga mat? Cause you a bougie dog chilling on the yoga mat. How do you learn? Well, 
we learn by trial by error <laughs> because we made a couple of errors when we originally started setting up our homestead. And I'm gonna show you a couple of errors that we made given the past situation that we had to deal with in regards to the fires that is still actually burning. So when we originally cleared our space out to place our home, we actually had the contractors take those trees and move them over here. This is what we cut. Um, when we were actually clearing the space out that area to move the home, we cut five trees and this is where we put all the trees, right here, right there. Yeah, that is not good because it's not too far from the house. fires. Um, this actually was a wake-up call for us and actually a good lesson for us. Another place that we actually dumped trees because <laughs> we didn't know where to where to put them and we thought we would just put them somewhere for a later date for us to clean it up in a later date is our little creek area. So we have a little creek on the side. We actually have two creeks on both sides of the home. And I'm going to um, actually walk over to the creek where we actually dumped the trees and I'll show you what that area looks like. It's really bad. It's really bad. It's really bad, but it's okay because we're gonna we're gonna clean all that stuff up. So when we first cleared out the land, we put all the trees into this little creek area over here. So we're gonna show you what that looks like. It's bad. So don't clown us. Oh, they're going to clown us. Yeah, well, we didn't know. They and don't know what they're doing. We don't know what we're doing. What the hell are they doing? <laughs> We don't know what we're doing, but guess what? I don't care because I'm learning and it's fun to learn and make mistakes on the way. Here's where we go. So we had the contractor cut the driveway in and clear all of these bushes and stuff out. He took the bulldozer and pushed all of the dead trees and brushed into our secondary creek. I'm trying to turn the camera this way, but I'm not turn the hand this way. <laughs> So this is the creek that where we put all the trees, the dead trees and bush. Actually, all this clear land here was filled with all of that. So um, we mistakenly decided to put the dead bushes over here. Dumb decision. Dumb decision. Yep, it was, it was, but, but we didn't know when we first, you know, when we first purchased the land and the fires have actually taught us a huge lesson. Luckily, the lesson um, is still salvageable. We can still do something about it. And that is really just getting rid of all of this. But you know what? Now that we're looking at it, we, we think that some animals or something probably are living under here because there's a creek under there. Huh? Rabbits. rabbits? Did you see rabbits? Oh. I like this little rock area though. It's really pretty. But we probably have rabbits and and <laughs> look at that. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> oh my gosh. But that's a lot to to try to. Plus all the fallen limbs over there. Plus all the limbs the over there. there. That big tree fell before we even bought the property. That this fell. tree. Uh, but basically, all of this is dangerous. All of this stuff is super duper dangerous. All of it is what? Dangerous. <laughs> it is flammable. Flammable. Thank Highly you. Highly flammable. Highly flammable. Yes. What the hell are y'all doing, flammable? <laughs> yes. We have our work cut out for us because all of that back there is no good. No bueno. No bueno. <laughs> Even though we have some other projects that we were thinking about doing first, we're actually going to start on this because we're still in fire season. And fire season, it goes all the way until October. So the creek so. is here and it's not too far from the house. The house is right there. 
super duper close, but too, but it is too close. We have a whole other side of, a, of our property, which is on this side over here. We made it to our rock. So this is our favorite rock. This is the rock that we all like to sit on, meditate. It's just our, we call it the rock of peace. It's the Zen rock. It's the Zen rock. <laughs> so we're following the trails that the animals made, the cows and deers. And we have more fallen trees that we need to get rid of. Up there. Up there. So this is our creek, and this is more stuff we pushed into the creek. <laughs> I hate to say that, just more, more brush, more trees, dead trees that we pushed in, into the creek when we first purchased the land and cleared out the space. But again, we did not know, but now you know. Dum -dum. This is all of our land as well. And that's a whole nother part over there. We call it the vortex, the vortex. We call it the vortex because there are three trees that are very uh, shaped like a pyramid. So like a, triangle. like a triangle pyramid, same thing. And we'll take you guys over there at another time, probably in the fall or winter when all the brush and everything goes down. But right now we just have to deal with our mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if you can hear the helicopters in the background. They're still putting out fires. We want to make sure that we're clearing out um, all of the brush and trees that may catch on fire in the future. So when we cleared out all the space from up the hill, we cleared out all the space all the way down to the driveway. All of this space was filled with trees and bushes and debris. And we pushed all of that over to the creek. And if you can see there, we're up the hill right now, but if you can see all of that is all the dead trees and bushes in our creek area. And I'm gonna agree with my husband on this one. We were dumb dumb. It's terrible. We have so much work to do. What what were we well I was gonna say what were we thinking, but <laughs> we were. Our entire creek is just all of just dead brush bushes. Look at that, look at that. It just goes all the way up the hill. We made a nice little home for all the little animals. Oh boy. <laughs> I feel sick just looking at it. Yeah, we're just walking along the side. We have to remove this big dead baby. And all of the crap that's on the other side of it. <gasps> you can see that, did you? <sighs> wow. And then all the way down the hill. What do you have to, to do more work. What do you have to say for yourself? That was a big goof. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson learned. Yeah. Won't do that ever again. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to laugh at ourselves because yeah. we didn't know. We didn't know. And you know, we just surveyed our property from the top of the hill all the way down and we pushed all those trees and bushes in Into the, creek. the creek. Yeah. And so we have to get rid of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Oops. Oops. Seven Sigma of Green.